Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Gibson, and I'm going to walk you through some of the basics of getting started with your argument research paper. I have decided to focus my example on Andy Warhol, who I find very interesting. I've been watching a documentary about him on Netflix, and it's super interesting. So I am just going to start by going to Google and typing in Andy Warhol, Influence on American Culture. The first thing that comes up is labeled as a blog. So I've got to be kind of wary about that. When I go to that website, um, I'm actually getting a lot of factual information. It's kind of basic stuff that provides me with background information. So I would actually be okay citing this because it's not someone's opinion uh, when I read it. In fact, one of the things I'm noticing about this paragraph right here is that it's telling me about his process in making art, for example, like the soup cans that are really well known. And it's talking about the screen printing process, which involved participation of several people in a quasi-production line. I think that that part of uh, Warhol's approach is so interesting because he wasn't possessive of his art in, in that way. He kind of invited other people in to help work on it. And one of the things that I feel like I've grown to understand about his influence on American culture is that when he took that approach, he made people feel like they could experience art in a much more accessible way, not in kind of like a snobby, art isn't for me, um, art is only for rich people kind of way. And so, you know, for today, we still see like Andy Warhol's art on t-shirts and, and um, it's really been democratized. So I'm going to use that as a main idea in my research paper. And what I've done is I've started to build out these slides. I took a screenshot of that paragraph that I'm going to reference and I've copied the URL and pasted it there. I've not yet put in the citation machine step. I'll do that in a minute. And I've bullet pointed some of the information that I found valuable in that article down here. Over here on this right-hand side of my slide is where I need to start thinking about how can I use that information? Because it's not valuable unless I can actually put it into my writing and use it to support the idea that he's influential in American culture. So I think that, as I already explained, it really shows how the average person can begin to relate better to art, that uh, Andy Warhol was one of the first people that kind of invited others in to the art world, either uh, through participation or by creating art as a subject of like everyday things and elevating those to an important level. And that might be another another whole paragraph that I could explore um, as a reason of, that he was influential because no one was doing this before him. So anyway, um, I have put the basics down on this slide. Hopefully that makes sense. And I've also gone in search of another citation that is not a blog. Uh, but first, let me take care of that citation machine. It can be a little confusing when you go to this website. So I typed in citation machine to get myself started. I don't want the APA version of citations. That's for like science papers. I need the MLA citation generator because that's what we use for English papers. And so what I'm going to do is grab that URL here. I'm going to copy it and go back here to the MLA citation generator. And uh, my site is, my source is a website. And it's going to allow me to paste in that URL. And I'm going to click search. And, okay, it's searching for my source. If nothing is happening, please search again. Okay, I hope something happens. There are a lot of pop-ups and things on this website. I don't love it for that reason, but 
it does help me it does help me simplify the citation process quite a bit so it requires some clicking and some scrolling down oh and look at that it's like mm, you're citing a blog is that a good idea but i think it's gonna be all right in this situation goodness it gives me a lot of information before it actually gives me the citation probably it's trying to show me ads or something in the meantime. I hit continue. I scroll. I'm looking, looking, looking for my citation. And man, it's really taking a while to get it to me. Complete citation. Okay. Scrolling. Okay, finally. So here it gives me the citation that I want. And I guess I'll click on create citation. I don't know why I should have to do that. It already gave me one. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Sorry, it's probably making me dizzy. I'm trying to find the actual citation. And what happened? Let me go back one and see if I missed something here. That's easy to do on this website. It's a little overwhelming. And I'll go back again. All right. Honestly, this is a citation. I really just want to copy it. Ha! Ah, copy citation. There we go. All right. That took some time and some scrolling and some looking, and that's really annoying, but honestly, it's worth it for the time it saves me. The time it saves me is having to look up how to put all that information in order myself. And now this is ready to go for a work cited page. So those are the basics of what you're doing here.